Central Church of Christ is a family-oriented congregation that believes that Jesus the Christ is the head of the church and that the Bible is right. We're comprised of a group of committed, imperfect people who are striving to walk with our Lord and Savior. Yes, Sundays at Central make a difference, but we want to ensure that we're impacting your daily lives. We're dedicated to making a difference, not only in the lives of our church family, but also in our surrounding communities. Central offers several classes, ministries, and programs for people of all ages that we're confident will fit your needs. We'd love to show you why our congregation is the right church home for you so stop on by and join us for worship service so that you can experience how Sundays at Central make a difference. Welcome to Central Church of Christ, where Sundays at Central make a difference. Good morning, Central. Here are a few housekeeping reminders before we begin our worship service. Please remember to put electronic devices on silent, wear your mask while in the building, adhere to social distancing, follow the dismissal procedure at the end of worship service, and if you have a precious little one who may get restless, please utilize the mother's room or take them to junior worship. Central, it's time to worship. Worship, to worship, and give God all of the praise. It's time to music. Uh, you are the song that I sing. You are the melody. You are the harmony. Praise to your name I will bring. You are my mind. hold to God's unchanging hand. Got that request while I was up here. Sorry to the media ministry, but I'll give you a second to get there. <clears throat> Everybody ought to hold it to his hand. Hold on to my God's unchanging will. Everybody ought
before Brother Rupert comes to us with the message, everybody will be happy over there. Please stand if you're able at this time. Everybody will be happy over there. <clears throat> Let us sing. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond where the sailor shall soon the glory share.
to God who has blessed us and granted us the privilege to be present on today to lift our voices and to give him praise. Amen. To all who are present, those who are listening by phone or online, we are thankful for your presence on today. Amen. want you to know the Lord is still good. He's kind and we ought to be grateful to him. Do want to thank Brother Cook for filling in, know that he did an outstanding job. And we are encouraged that he's on the same team preaching the word of truth. Amen. To our fathers, we thank God for you. Father's Day last week. May God bless you, continue to work towards being all that we need to be in the service of the Lord. Amen. Good to have in our midst, Brother Sam Bryant. He's back. Good to see him. Amen. His presence on today. Do want to thank you, Central, for your cooperation, your prayers. As we have worked through COVID today, will be our last day with our Mass. And then we're moving forward next Sunday, amen, to make it optional. I want you to know, not just about COVID. If a church is ever going to go forward, if a family is going to go forward, if a country is going forward, it must learn to trust. And our trust is in the Lord. And even though among us there are things that we must all do, it's for the good of us all. And I want to thank you because for a church to ever have elders and deacons to ever reach its full potential it must be able to follow by faith. And so I'm just encouraged, elated and happy that you were able, that you followed and you cooperated with and as we go forward, may God give us, bless us with all the things we lay before him. Amen. Well, I didn't get an amen whether you agree or not. It is the truth in life. And so I want to continue to encourage. Now, before I begin, I want to thank you for your traveling grace, Sister Rupert and I to the National Lectureship. I want you to know it was hotter than hot. How hot? It was hotter than Mississippi hot. Where we'll use the 95 degrees every day, but before we stepped off the plane, when she opened the door, it was 100 degrees. So if I look like I may have a tan, <laughs> it was hot but God is good if you have your copy of God's word 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 7 through 10 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 7 through 10 and as our ushers are getting ready and coming down the aisle we want to thank all of our visitors and if you are in our midst, and you are visiting with us, when you receive a visitor's card, if you will raise your hand, they identify you, and we ask that you will complete it. And then place it in the collection tray once you are done. And the announcer will recognize your presence on today. The Word of God for the people of God. 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 7, the Bible reads, 
unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Contrast, but you. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. While there at the National Lectureship, Centering around the theme, salvation through the crucified or only through the crucified Christ. There were a topic dealt with, the fallacies of unity in diversity, open fellowship, the silence of the scripture, as to say the Bible didn't say it. It does not have to say something when it gives you license to do what God commands. The law of prohibition. I want to deal with the church to help us, help our young people to understand what the church is, to whom it belongs, and why he called us. If you will lend me your heart and ears to this thought, the called out ones, the called out ones. The apostle Peter addresses the diaspora of his day, those who were scattered, both Jews and Gentile, as the called out, called out from darkness, into the marvelous light of God. As the called out, which comes from the Greek word ekklesia, which simply is the church. Ek meaning out. And of course, kion simply means called out. You and I have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Thus it reveals who we are, to whom we belong, and why we belong to him. Who is the church? To whom does the church belong? Then why, what is expected of the church? Note, when we consider who we are, we have to view it from God's perspective. Anytime we start viewing from our perspective, it leads us into danger, misapplication, draw the wrong conclusion in life. Thus it has to be from God's perspective. Just as he made man from the dust of the ground, God's perspective. The man was all alone. Then God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. I'll make him a help me. You have to view it from God's perspective. He didn't make the woman first and then made the man for the woman. No, he made the man and then he made the woman for the man. God's perspective, how he sees things. Your sense, two cents, my two cents does not matter. 
Why, preacher? Because in the end, it's God who judges. Now listen to God's perspective. The description. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Why? That you should show forth the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For we were not a people, but we became a people to show him praise. That's the key. This identity, scripture, is taken from Exodus chapter 19, beginning at verse number 7. For we see a type, the church in the wilderness, a type. And thus we are the church of the New Testament. Thus listen, Exodus 19, 3 to 7, the Bible says, and Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob, Tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptian, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore ye will obey, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. In the Old Testament, the church in the wilderness, he called them out of Egypt. He establishes his covenant with them. You have seen what I've done. Now if you keep my word, you shall be a peculiar, peculiar in the text does not mean in terms of fashion, but a purchase people. I purchased you. You are in bondage. I delivered you. You shall be a kingdom of priests. You serve me. You are a holy nation, moral in your standing, how you shall live. For I delivered you. Now note that. Here it is. Peter speaking now to the New Testament church. You are chosen. You are a peculiar people. You're a holy nation. You're not like the nations around you. You don't allow the world to infiltrate you. You are to transform. I want you to see God's perspective. So it is. When we read the word of God, show forth the praise of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we today have been called just like them out of Egypt. That's the word. We've been purchased by the blood of Jesus. And we are to show praise to God, not just lifted hands but how we live, how we respond to all the pressures of life. Now for a moment, consider the perspective of God regarding the church in the wilderness. I, I want you to see, Brother Harris, if you will bring up Israel's journey to help us to appreciate and then understand who we are. See, when you look at, they came out of Egypt. Can you point it over there, Brother Harris, of Egypt? That's number one. They came out of Goshen, coming out of Egypt. 
Then they crossed the Red Sea, number two. After crossing the Red Sea, they came all the way down to Mount Sinai, the traditional route. And after going all the way down, traveling to Mount Sinai, then they came on up to Ebenezer, right there. And then they go around, you remember, in the wilderness, Paran, and so forth. And finally, they go into Canaan's land, the promised land. Now listen carefully. They came out of Egypt. They came out of idolatry. Show the gods of Egypt. Here are the gods of Egypt where they were. They worship. Egypt did. Ra, the sun god. Orion, all of these false gods. And the gods look just like them. This is what Egypt's God, God called them out of Egypt. And you remember the plagues. The plagues were all about to defeat their gods. He called them out. Then he sent them to Canaan. Bring up Canaan's God. Baal, if you remember, they made when they came down, rather Moses came down the mountain and they began to worship Baal, false god. Baal, worship. Bring up, if you have, Astroth. Because every male god had a female god. Here it is, Astroth, made out of wood and notice her arms around her breast as she's the god of fertility and if you then cut some of the wood and sprinkle it on the ground and somehow it'll help your crops to grow and your economy become great. Israel was called out of idolatry from Egypt and God sent her to Canaan another place of idolatry. Did you get it? Then he says, you shall not marry, be like them. Did y'all get the journey? They are called out of idolatry and going to idolatry. Note, here's the exclusion. You are my people. You are not like them. You are not all of them. You in the world, but you not. Because you belong to me. I brought you out of that darkness and brought you in to the marvelous light. You transition from one place and going to another. You are not like them. To help us to understand who we are. You see, as the church, the church is, as we would say, we are not a denomination. We're not interdenominational. We don't have fellowship with just like the church in the wilderness, we too have been called. We came out from because we at one time were in darkness. He called us by the gospel out of darkness, Egypt, and into his marvelous light. Based upon the principle, the church can't have fellowship with denomination as if it came out of or a break away from. See, the church is undenominational. God founded it. It didn't come out of huh. Egypt. See, when you look at the church in the wilderness, it didn't come out of. 
Abraham, he made a promise, I'll make you a great nation. Genesis chapter 12. I'll give you land and through you all nation, the church, the coming of Jesus shall be blessed. The church then didn't come out of denominationalism. Listen, as we deal with, think about even the Holy Spirit, the third person in the Godhead. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit are you all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, we've all been made to drink of into one spirit. Who baptized us? The one spirit. And he baptized us into one body. The Holy Spirit does not baptize into denominationalism many churches. <laughs> that would be a violation of what he just stated, that he called us out. And if he called us out into the marvelous light from darkness, darkness has to do with all of the error, the ignorance of the things worship when we were in the world. But he called us from it out of it. That's why we are the called, the ecclesia, the church, who gathers on a Sunday because we've been called from darkness. It's amazed me at times we try to go back to the darkness. <laughs> who in the world would want to go back to slavery? Oh, don't get me excited. Again, listen to the Apostle Paul. 2 Timothy chapter 6, 14 to 18, he says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? What concord has Christ with Beal? Uh, what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God have said, I'll dwell in them, I'll walk in them, I'll be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Second, Timothy chapter 6, 14 to 18. What I want you to see in the text is who are we? We are the church. We are the called out. Where do we come from? He called us from darkness. Would it make sense to go back into darkness when we've been called from darkness into his marvelous light? Isn't that what Paul says? If our gospel, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, be here, it is here to them that are lost, whom the God of this world have blinded their mind. But the gospel of Jesus, the glorious light, its purpose is to shine, illuminate, make it clear who we are. And I'll give you the why in a moment. Secondly, as the church in the wilderness was a kingdom of priests. Note the Bible. We are a royal priesthood to offer sacrifices to Jesus. See, again, the Old Testament. Exodus 19, 3 through 6. Moses went up to God, and the Lord called him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob, 
the children of Israel. You've seen what I did unto the Egyptians. How I bear you on eagle wing, brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar will coming. Peculiar treasure above all the people. Why? For all the earth, this is the limit, all the earth is mine. If you are peculiar, I can give you whatever you want when you want it. Why? Because I own the earth. And if I own it, I make the grass grow. I control Wall Street. I can give you whatever you need when you need it. Why, God? For the earth is mine. Oh, that's a sermon worth preaching. When you understand who it belongs to, he can make it do whatever he wants it to do. When he wants it to do and give it to whom he wants to give it to. Oh, we had an uncle, God bless his soul. He could take wood as a carpenter and he could make that wood turn corner. And we was, how do you do that? He said, I know what to do. You see, the earth belongs to God. He makes the grass grow and he can feed you from the pasture and when you have no food, he can make the raven stop by to give you food. He can make the rain flow. He can stop it from raining. He can feed you whenever. He can feed you for 40 years if he wants to do it. Why? Because it's his. He said you'll be a peculiar people. Then he goes on further. And then he says, For the earth is mine, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. Listen to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. You also are live with stone, a build up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. To offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. See, as priests of God, we offer spiritual sacrifices without a priest of the Catholic Church. See, everyone in here who have been baptized for the remission of their sin are priests. Which means you don't have to stand or go to some little corner and say some prayer to some priest. Why? Because you are a priest yourself. When communion time comes, you don't need a priest to put his finger on the bread and to minister to you. Open your mouth and I'll put it on your tongue. No, you're a priest yourself. <laughs> this is what he's teaching. Oh, help me, Jesus. Thirdly, thirdly, the church in the wilderness, it was a holy nation. It was to be a holy nation. The word holy means moral standing. Live right. Treat your brother right. Note, note what he says. See, in the Old Testament, it's stated within the Ten Commandments. Exodus chapter 23 to 17. Let me read a few. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thou God in vain. And then know there are some of the Ten Commandments that are not in the New Testament. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. That was given to the Jew, not given to the Gentile. It's not in the New Covenant. You remember they sought to condemn Jesus because he was hungry and the disciple was hungry and it was a Sabbath day and they started plucking corn and then the Pharisees came out. They wanted to condemn him. Why does he violate the law of God? And Jesus said to them, do you know who I am? <laughs> it 
He says to them, have you not read what David did when he was a hungry and he went into the house of God and ate of the show bread? And one greater than Solomon, David is here. I'm Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for the man and not man for the Sabbath. Why were you teaching it then in the Old Testament to teach that you got six days to work, but you need one day to recover? Health, your worship, to give to God. As Daddy used to say, if you work every day, Willie, you won't be working long. <laughs> Y'all ain't got to say, man, you look like you. We all, God expects us to work. He made us to work. But he also expects, that's what he was doing. We need a day of rest too. Listen to him. Honor your father and mother. Same principle. That your days may be long upon the land which the Lord thou God given. Isn't that Ephesians chapter 6? The law of respect. Honor your parents. I remember when mom and dad was alive, every now and then, you know, you had to think about that. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm married with children, but I'm still, I still, I would still say, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Because you never get too old. Y'all not with me here. In respecting the age. First Timothy chapter 5, an elderly man, you show him respect. Elderly women, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor as if you can bear false witness against your enemy. That's not the meaning of the text. <laughs> thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his man serve, nor his maid serve, nor his oxen, nor his donkey, or anything that's your neighbor. We too, as the called out, are to live morally and righteous. See, do you get the picture? He called them out of Egypt where they knew all the idolatry and then led them to Canaan's land filled with idolatry. Note the journey from idolatry to idolatry. But they were not to be like Egypt. They were not to be like those in Canaan. God himself is saying, they are not mine, they are not mine, but you are mine. Don't you be like them. As a matter of fact, there's a text where he says to them, do not ask me, do not ask how they worship their gods because I am your God. How often we may find ourselves asking, how does the world worship over out there? They don't know him. We do. Listen to him. Morally. 1 Peter 2, 11 through 18, he says, Dear the beloved, I beg you, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrim. Listen to the reading of the word. I beg you as strangers in a land that's not yours, pilgrim, as if you have a backpack on and you just traveling life. Because this home is not your world. This home, this is not our home. We're just passing through. He said, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. How many of us deal with struggles every day? 
How many of your flesh fighting with your spirit? How many of you know what's right, but knowing what's right and doing what's right can be two different things? That's Romans chapter 7. In me, there is no good thing. So he says, I beg you, strangers and pilgrims, you abstain from flesh lust, which war against the soul, having your conversation, that is your lifestyle, honest among the Gentile, folk who watching you, whereas they speak against you as evildoers. They may by your good work, which they shall behold, they glorify God in the day of visitation. Then he goes to the job. Submit yourself to every ordinance of man. You then, you submit. You say to the government, you respect the king, the president, the mayor. He goes on further. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. For whose sake? The Lord's sake. Whether it be to the king as supreme, make the king here the president. Or unto governors, unto them, then he says, that are sent by them for the punishment of evildoers, that's the police officers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God. What is it? that with well-doing we may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Foolish men, Gentile, how they live, but you are not like them. You are, call you mind. Here's number four. You see what's going on in Baltimore's Pride Week. <laughs> you call out. That's what Egypt practiced. That's what the Canaanites practiced. If possible, you could have been back there and practiced some, but when you heard the gospel, he called you from that. You can't go back because he called you to be different. Doesn't mean people don't struggle. Doesn't mean just because we've been baptized, all sins are over. Say amen if you can. Am I talking to all the holy folk who don't do any wrong in here? Then I already know you're lying, so already. We're not talking perfection, but the blood of Jesus and the one who called, and now we're in the transition. Note now, he says, fear God, honor the king. You servant be subject to your master with all fear. That is, employees respect employers, and then the employers respect the employees. Then he says, like the church in the wilderness, we are... We too are peculiar people. Peculiar means purchase. Not as our view of some fashion. See, he purchased them. You remember? It was the Passover. And he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And Moses placed blood over on the doorpost. And when the death angel came, all oh, the firstborn of the Egyptians, their firstborn, the beast, they all died. But all those of the children of Israel that had blood over the doorpost, he passed over. First Corinthians 5, 7 says, Jesus is our Passover lamb. We too have been purchased. When? When he died at Calvary. We obeyed the gospel, baptized for the remission of our sins. Somebody paid the price. So he paid it. He brought us. 
He who has been purchased has no rights. What are you talking about? I don't like this. I don't like that. You don't have no heaven nor no hell. You are in darkness. I was in darkness and he called us from the darkness. <laughs> well, well, finally, like the church in the wilderness. You see, the why. We are the praise. For the book said to show him praise. Did y'all get it? To show him praise. Well, what is praise? Our mentality, our thinking is to praise the Lord. Oh, he's been. Yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. There ain't nothing wrong with praising the Lord. You ought to sing, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Speaking to yourself, some hymn and spiritual song, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. We are praising the Lord, but the word praise means your response to the conditions of life. <laughs> so God is He's just excited. He's watching how you deal with life's trouble. That's giving him pray. Look at good. Struggling on a job. Been cursed out. But he won't curse nobody out. He's still walking strong with his God. What is he doing? He's giving God Praise. I thank you that I'm not what I used to be because when I was in darkness, I would have told you something. But now, as I've been transitioning in life, I give him praise. See, the book says in Matthew chapter 6, what good if you speak to people who speak to you. You haven't done nothing. But when you can speak to folk who don't even speak to you, when you act in a appropriate way, when other folk are disrespectful, that's giving God praise. When you honor the president, you honor the mayor, when you honor your parents, when you can follow the way of God, act like God who makes his son the shine on the just as well as the unjust, you giving him praise. praise. Anybody in here want to give the Lord praise? I don't mind praising the Lord every now and then. I'm driving in the car and I'm just, yeah. I'm listening to the singing. I'm praising the Lord by my mouth. I give him praise. And then after I'm done singing, I got to learn how to act like I have some sense and praising the Lord. Are oh, y'all following me? Now I'm giving him praise to show him who called me out of darkness. Because when you were in darkness, you acted like you, like folk who were in darkness. But when you learn better, you do better. Because he said, I called you out. And in the transitioning into the light, the light opens your eye. You know, I didn't know that, y'all. I just acted like everybody else was acting. I dressed like everybody else, showing everything, because I was in the darkness. See, when you're in the darkness, you act like that. But when he calls you out, you don't act like that, because he called you from Egypt, who you are. Then he said, I 
I'm your God. That's the covenant. You belong to me. Why, God? To show me praise. So the world, when they look at you, they say, who's that man or woman's God? Who are their God that they don't act like the way we act? Do what we do. He says, that's my child. That's my child. That's my child. See, that's the difference in the world. If you cussing and fussing, evidently what you believe hasn't made a difference in your life. Amen. Say amen if you can. Amen. Because we have been called there is no unity in diversity. Listen to the text. Out of Egypt with gods. Journeying to Canaan where there are more gods. He doesn't want them to be like Egypt nor Canaan. Mm -mm. You mind. And you ought to make a difference in the world. Anybody in here today? Anyone in here wants to belong to Jesus? To his church? Anybody want to wear the name Christian? Not some denominational name? Not a hyphenated name? Not a prefix name? Not a suffix name? But just a Christian? If you want to be a Christian today, not in name only. That's a song we used to sing. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. See, not on paper, but I live it. You want to be a Christian, no more and no less, just a Christian. If you're here, you're not looking for where well, it didn't say not to. <laughs> so, see, he didn't say not to. When he told you what to do, he told you what not to do. That's the law of prohibition. If you want to be a Christian, no more and no less. Here in the gospel, the death, bear, and the resurrection. Call out the world into the marvelous light. Do you believe it? If you will confess who he is, he's the savior of the world. If you will repent of your sin, Lord, I've done wrong in my life. And I'm willing to be baptized for the remission of my sin. When I was out there, I was in the world. You called me and I heard your truth because my sheep, Jesus said, hear my voice. They know me, and I know them. Will you come to them? We're going to stand and see. If you need to come to Jesus right now, why not come? If somehow your faith, your faith is shaken, because all oh, what's going on, why not come and renew your faith in the one Lord, the one faith, and the one baptism? Amen. Will you come to Jesus as we sing right now? All things are ready, come, come to the feast, come for the table now is spread. Ye of man is she, a ye with ring of one now shall be richly a fair. Though I hear the invitation of
Central family, over the past few years, we have faced challenges and rejoiced in triumphs. Throughout the COVID pandemic, the health ministry and the leadership here at Central have worked together to develop and implement COVID procedures to ensure your health and safety. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Health and Human Services, as of February 2023, daily COVID-19 reported cases are down 92%, COVID-related deaths declined by over 80%, and COVID-19 hospitalizations are down nearly 80%. As a result of these trends, May 11, 2023 marked the end of the COVID-19 public health emergency. So I am pleased to announce that Central will be moving to phase three of our COVID-19 procedures. Yes, we are in a better place than we were three years ago but we have to be mindful that COVID still exists. It is added to the other list of long-standing viruses such as the flu. It will be important for us to continue to practice the following. Proper and frequent hand washing, self-monitoring for illnesses and staying home if we have symptoms, self-care, not limited to, but including annual physicals, healthy eating, exercising, and staying up to date with immunizations. Transition to phase three will be broken into two parts. Phase 3A will be eliminating social distancing, and phase 3B will be making mask wearing optional. A few things to remember when deciding whether to mask or not. It has been proven that there are individuals who have a higher risk for contracting COVID-19 or experiencing severe illnesses. Individuals include those with compromised immune systems, those who have chronic diseases such as hypertension, diabetes, and our elderly. It is important that we govern ourselves appropriately and respect one another's boundaries and respect our decisions to mask or not mask. Phase 3A, eliminating social distancing, will go into effect June 4th. As long as things go well, Phase 3B, mask wearing being optional, will go into effect July 2nd. With details how this will affect our worship service, here's Brother Nash. Thanks, Sister Harbin. Central, by the grace of God, we've made it. We're back on the road of normal operations here at the building. As Sister Harbin just mentioned, beginning next Sunday, June the 4th, we're eliminating social distancing. This means you can sit wherever or with whoever without distancing. However, for now, offering and communion will remain contactless, meaning, as of right now, we're not passing trays along the roads. What does this mean when you're choosing a seat? Although we're eliminating social distancing, the empty rows in between active rows will remain so that the brothers can collect contributions and used communion kits. So please select rows with the blue decals on the floor. On behalf of the ushers and I, we would like to thank you for your cooperation and patience as we safely and efficiently sat more than 200 members every Sunday for two and a half years. Sister Harbin? Thanks, Brother Nash. We have been blessed to come to this point without any significant outbreaks of COVID-19 here at the building. Let us continue to take care of ourselves and each other. I will stay abreast with statistics related to COVID-19 and speak with the leadership as warranted. Please continue to keep the leadership and the health ministry here at Central in your prayers. I walk, I walk, I walk, I walk. I'm determined to walk with Jesus. Yes, I am. I'm Brother Winston Smith, campus ministry leader for the Central Church of Christ. 
College age members, we need you. The campus ministry is looking to build relationships and share the gospel with college students on campuses throughout the Baltimore metropolitan area. Right now, we're building a network of young adults that promotes Christian growth and that will provide us with the confidence and tools to share the gospel with our peers. We'll create a system of how to study God's word and then teach it in one-on-one -on -one and group settings. Central, with God's help and your support, we're confident that we can make an impact. Please pray with us as we build relationships and share the gospel on the many campuses in this city. Overtaken by the love of Christ, I made a vow to give him my life. At the potter's table, on the potter's wheel, mold and shape me, Lord, that I may be filled and live in memory. What you did for me, for me. Oh, yeah. you did for me. How you set me free, set me free, set me free. At the dark Calvary, yeah. I want to be one of yours. I want to be a worthy vessel, a one that is ready. One that's ready. I want to, to be used by you. I want to be. I want to be yeah. a worthy vessel. Lord, I want to do, do, do just what, what you, you want, want me to teach me and show me do, do, truly how to love, do, do, just like that sacrifice do, do, from heaven above. Do, do, Perfect union had never been broken, stronger words had never been spoken from you. It is finished. Teach me how to finish. Truly love. A God be loved. From heaven above. Want to live in memory. I want to live. How you set me free. What you did. Set me free. Heavenly. 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 I want to be. I want to be a worthy vessel. Want to be used. to be used by you. I want to be. I want to be a worthy vessel. I want to do, do, do. One that's ready to be used by you. Live